So hello and welcome back to the Champ Today Horse Racing Podcast as we preview the flat season. We have a fantastic podcast this afternoon with Ronan Groom from the Irish Field and Mr. Andrew Blair White from the Blair White Blog. Good evening, lads, and I hope you're keeping well. Hi, Barry. Yeah, all good. Yeah, very good, Barry. I hope you're well yourself. And we have, of course, Colin Keane as well, uh, Irish champion jockey in 2017. And, of course, he rides Siskin in the 2000 Guineas, coming up a schedule for um, Friday, the 12th of June. We'll hear a little bit from Colin about Siskin and then come back and we'll chat with the, with the lads about the season upcoming. So delighted to be joined on the Champ Today podcast by Mr. Colin Keane. I suppose 20, 2017 Irish champion jockey, Colin, how are you? Hi, I'm well, Barry. I'm well, thank you. How are you keeping yourself? I'm not too bad. Listen, almost nine weeks, I suppose, since the, the season started at NACE, obviously with interruptions of lockdown. You must be chomping at the bit to get back. Yeah, we're very much looking forward to it. Um, to be honest, it's been kind of normal for us as such. We, we had to keep the horses going, but no, we're very much uh, looking forward to getting back now. And um, I suppose very different times. If, if, if lockdown has taught you one or two things, Colin, what would it be? <laughs> How much you probably appreciate the racing. Um, so someday you'd be complaining about driving down the country to Kerry or Limerick, but after this, too, you, you won't be complaining, I don't think. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, I'd say you can't wait to get back and I suppose the one horse on everyone's lips from, from the Gerlines yard anyway is the uh, unbeaten first defence called uh, Siskin and um, now I suppose he's, he's favoured obviously for the 2000 uh, guineas in Ireland, how smart do you think he could be and how has he progressed over the winter Colin? Yeah he's done, he's done very well o- over the winter physically um, he looks a picture he's in great form and his two his two year old form speaks for itself. Um, but I suppose we won't know until we run uh, in the guineas. But uh, the boss has him in a great place, and we're we're ready to go. Tem- temperament wise, I I know like what what's he like at home and and on the race track. I believe you tried the hood at home, and and he may he may wear that in the guineas. Yeah, obviously he's, he's usually uh, by the last days he's very straightforward. He wouldn't question his temperament at all. Or even then, she wouldn't question his temper at all. Uh, but we we gave him a few jumps out of the stalls with the hood on, and that seems to be working for him. So that's what he'll wear when he runs. And as I say, his, his temperament is back to normal. He's very relaxed horse. So fingers crossed. And I suppose he he's handled he's handled soft ground the last days when and I'd imagine that. That maybe a sm- a slight worry going on the comments from Jared that maybe he'd want it a little bit better. Um, yeah, that that was the worry on the day, the ground, but he 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 overcame it. He had to really get down and dig deep for a battle, and he did that, and he, he came out on top. It just goes to show you how willing he is. He's uh, just a proper good horse. Absolutely, and would you, would you think he's probably the best you've ridden, Colin, at this stage? Or I'd have to say he is. Yeah, I'd have to say he is. Another horse Colin I wanted to ask you was, was La Mista. Uh, I suppose she she won the, the Park Express at Nace in March. Could she shape into a 1,000 guineas filly in your mind? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, the big thing about her on the day, I think, is ground. And I think the way the, we- the way the weather is, it'll be too quick for her. But she, she's a filly that probably wants to go further. But she, when the ground is like that, she's classy enough to step back and to as she did on the first day, you know. Fair enough. And um, Colin, last year, 103 winners on the track. Have you have you set a goal this year for the season ahead? Uh, well, each year yeah, I set uh, to try and do previous year's tally, which I don't think I'm going to do this year. Um, but look, we'll just try and ride as many winners and keep uh, sound, and that'll be the main goal. 2017 obviously your best year Irish champion jockey in that season and, and, and obviously broke the 100 mark as well winners wise what would it mean for Colin Keane uh, can you remember 2017 what would it mean to regain that title again for, for 2020 Colin well it would be brilliant that 2017 was the last day of the season I won't forget for a very long time to be crowned champion jockey and to ride my 100 winner on the day and especially I had a lot of friends and family there so on the day and the atmosphere was unbelievable so 
if I could get something like if I was able to get something like that for the last day this year, I'd be I'd be a very happy man. And there might be more celebrations in Marcy or Egan's if that's the case. Uh, future ambitions. <laughs> Um, future ambitions, Colin. I have to ask you. I suppose there was a piece in the Racing Post recently, uh, which your name mentioned for one of the higher profile jobs in the UK. Uh, did you? I suppose, did you ever think about riding more abroad at at some point, or, or you know, what, what, I suppose, what's the the future ambitions for Colin Keane? I suppose firstly, I'd love to be crowned champion jockey. I'd love to ride a, a Formula One or a least one, if not more, Group One uh, winner for my boss. And for just our string to get keep growing as it is as it has been, I think the quality of horses has gotten better every year, and I think it's gonna. Oh, I hope it's gonna keep going that way. And um, but yeah, and obviously if we got any opportunities to ride abroad, we we take them. And just obviously you, you mentioned Jer, like, and he's been very 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 loyal, and you loyal to him as well. You know what would it mean for you to win a classic for Jer in particular? Sure, it mean everything. Um, it would be me repaying him the the confidence he put me in as a young lad to make me his stable jockey. I said, there's no doubt about it. I wouldn't be here without him. So it's the least I th- it's the least I could do. I think. <laughs> <laughs> And just just on back to Jer's two year olds uh, that, that that are going to run this year, as as a crop as a crop in general, are you are you confident? I suppose there can be plenty of winners in there. I think so. Yeah. Well, what they're showing us at home, they look like a very they look like a very nice bunch of Colts and fillies. Um, we've only a handful, maybe six furlong horses if we do, but the rest of them will be seven furlong milers to the middle, the back end, but. They look like they look like a, a quality bunch at home. So time will tell, I suppose. Colin Keane, listen, thanks very much for joining us on the, the Champ E podcast as we look ahead to the the flat season and I want to wish you, Colin, the very best look for the season ahead and of course for the Irish Two Guineas which is scheduled for the 12th of June I want to wish you the very best of luck and shall we catch you again at some point, Colin? Thanks, Barry, thanks for having me. Yeah, so lads, great to hear from, from Colin about, I suppose, his, his, his big hope Siskin this year as I said, it's Friday the 12th of June he's unbeaten, I suppose, in four starts Ger Lines has been patient with him. I think he uses talents. I think he will be difficult to beat. Ronan, you spoke to Ger, I, I believe. What, what, what's 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 your thoughts on Siskin? Yeah, um, yeah. Ger's Ger's the big interview uh, for the Irish Field this week. So lucky to talk to him uh, yesterday. Yeah, look, he's in. You know, Ger is, is a very practical guy, uh, trainer. The big question with Siskin, I guess, is the trip. Um, you know, I think going to head that if you if you if they wanted to call a trip now, they'd probably say seven furlongs. So, but you might as well go ahead and and have a look and at the guineas and find out uh, if he stays a mile. Then you know the season is there for him after to go back and trip if if they like. Um, so yeah, look, he's the, the Irish guineas looks a softer option than than going to Newmarket and taking on Pinatubo. He's probably deserves to be near the top of the market. His overall level of form, I don't think, is out of this world. I'm not sure where Monarch of Egypt uh, kind of is with with the Bally Doyle Colts, um, and he's kind of very evident on Siskin's form. Is obviously the horse that he beat the last twice in in group races. Yeah, I, I think he's maybe a bit short in the market at at this at this time, but I think he deserves to be one of the principals, if you know what I mean. In, in what looks a, a, a softer race. Yeah, I suppose he's never been beyond six furlongs, Ronan, and, you know, as everything was against him in the Phoenix. Uh, show battle, uh, Colin spoke about his, his battling qualities. Uh, in your opinion, will he get the mile? Yeah, I, th- I think he'd probably edge on the, you know, maybe 60, 40, no, or something like that. But it's, it's just so hard to know. I, I was in like... I don't. I can see exactly why you're going to the race because that's what you want to. These the races you want to win, and you might as well find out in the guineas. But I'd be slightly skeptical of 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 him staying. Yeah, no, I, I'd be a little bit more confident than you are, Andrew. Have you any thoughts, Buzzy, about the Irish two thousand guineas? Have you an alternative? Maybe I know he is five to two best price now. Uh, Sisk and Ronan, monarch of Egypt. Yeah, I'd I'd be with Ron, and I can see why they're obviously going to run in the race, and he he deserves to take his chance. Uh, but I, there's just that nagging doubt about the 
about staying and you do have this concern that in the last 100 yards he's just going to be running on fumes completely uh, I think I really actually quite liked Inish Free for this race but he's uh, set, he's had a setback so I think we won't see him till a, until the derby uh, therefore I know it's probably a bit unoriginal but I'd probably side with Armory at 5-1 to one, the second favourite I think you can put a Ruled through his two runs over in France at the back end of last year. Uh, he would have hated the ground against Alson. And the third to Victor Ludorum was well franked yesterday, actually. So mm. I think he's probably a little bit more value wise at five to one rather than Siskin at five to two. But it wouldn't be a race I'd have a massive play in, to be honest. Okay, as we'll come on to Newmarket. Which is this weekend? We'll go in. I suppose our podcast on Thursday will go into into this in a little bit more detail. But I suppose where does the value lie in your opinion at, at this point in time now, Roland? Pinatubo, are you a fan? Uh, you couldn't not be a, a fan, Barry. Really, the way he did things last season, he was electric in the Curra. Uh, you know, probably not as impressive back at Newmarket, but you know, he's still a two and a half length winner of um, a Dewhurst is, is pretty good, you know, it's, you were just looking at the current performance and kind of, that's the benchmark really for, um, for all of this generation, I suppose, you know, what's the odds on now, it's shade of odds on, you're just a bit, uh, you're, you're entitled to, you know, ask, you know, a bit more detailed questions of whether he trains on, if the ground is really, really quick, you know, uh, apparently he's, um, Charlie Appleby said this last year, and I actually did a small piece with him last year, saying he just does shows absolutely nothing at home as well. And you'd wonder just the way things have been this season, with um, you know the way things have worked out with 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 the the lockdown and race, and would they have preferred to have given him a run before Newmarket? Maybe. Uh, so I think you're at at his price, you're entitled to ask a few questions, but you know you have to be excited about him, and the hope is from. A non-betting point of view, you hope he goes and wins three or four lengths and uh, we have another superstar because what he did last year was as good, probably, if not better, than what Frankel did as a two-year-old. Yeah, I was going to ask you, maybe, could you compare to, I suppose, horses uh, that have gone before. Uh, ground looks like it'll be rattling fast as well this weekend, which will obviously play to his strengths. You know, his best performances were... We're on good. Obviously, Newmarket and the Dewhurst was soft. But Andrew, were you at the Curra at Champions Weekend? When did, did you? What, what, would you be with him again, or or, or against Pinatubo at this stage? Um, no, I wasn't. Unfortunately, at the Curra, it was a big shame. Um, I would have loved to have been there because it was probably the performance of the season. Uh, so it, it was a big shame. Um, I would say Pinatubo is obviously the most likely winner, and. <sighs> There, there is a part of you that thinks that it's just glaring at you and actually perhaps even money or a shade of odds on could actually not be the worst bet in the world. But he's just a bit too short for me. And um, I've been struggling to come up with an alternative in the race until yesterday. And I had a bit, bit of an epiphany moment yesterday. And I'm trying to find something that might hit the frame. And I've landed on Kenzai Warrior at 25 to 1 for Roger Teal. Now, Roger Teal had tipped to win come second in this race a couple of years ago, so he can do it if he has a decent horse. The horse won the Horace Hill at Newmarket, so he's got course form, has a group three. That race hasn't, like, uh, only one horse has come out and run since, so that form is completely untested. But he won a maiden at Salisbury, which is a 10-runner maiden, of which the seventh, the second, the fourth, the sixth, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth have all come out and won races since, including the second being Max Vega, who won the Zetland Stakes at Newmarket by three and a half lengths. I think this horse actually could well be overpriced. 25 to 1, if you got four places on the day, I'd like to see him hit the frame, and that's a better value bet than back in an odds-on shot. Fair enough, Andrew. I, I, I heard you out. Uh, listen, from the Irish perspective, I mean, obviously O'Brien is 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 travelling over Arizona and Wichita with stable staff, I suppose, with their camp beds and all uh, for, for a couple of weeks over there. But I suppose 
the one I like here would be uh, Wichita, you know, on his third start. I think he progressed from run to run. He hated the soft ground when he supplemented for the Dewhurst. I think I, I don't think the ground that day suited him. He's out of a French mayor. Uh, all the talk is obviously about Arizona, and he's been, I suppose, he's, he's more, more than half in price over the last couple of weeks. But I think Wichita is an out-and-out out miler, and I think the fast ground... Uh, would really suit him, obviously uh, by no name ever, and that's he's a relatively new sire, so we don't we can't really judge uh, no name ever as as a sire of I suppose the miners. Obviously he was a he was a more of a sprinting type himself. Uh, the other one I like actually is Kinross. I wouldn't give up hope on him. He's around the twelve to one mark as as well. He's obviously very talented. His his first win was was excellent. He had Vatican City, who's third favoured for the the Irish Guineas. Uh, he he him well he him well stuffed in behind. Now I know it was Vatican City's first run, and he ran a, he ran around a little bit in behind. But he had them, them well beaten, and I don't think the the fraturity up at, at Newcastle. I think he got banged about it in the early stages that day. But uh, he was I suppose they were the two that I was looking at at this stage. I might I suppose come down on a selection uh, later on in the week. I'm not going to play uh, this far out. But looking ahead to the the one thousand guineas uh, quadrilateral for me, I think she's definitely a lay. Um, I think you know the, the further the further she. The further she went, I think the better. I think she's going to be better over further and maybe potentially develop into a, a an Oaks filly. Andrew, do you think she, she looks skinny? And um, I suppose, what, what would your thoughts be on the Oaks? Yeah, I'd, I'd be with you there, Barry. Um, I think she took an awful lot of time to get organised in the Phillies mile and, and looked perhaps a little bit outpaced um, before kind of rattling home. And she did very well to win that day. So that, that would make you think that she is a very good filly. Uh, but with the likes of Mill Isle in the race and stuff like that, you wouldn't be quite so sure whether she might be taken off her feet early. Mm. Uh, I'm, yeah, a massive, massive, I'm a massive, I'm a massive fan, fan of Jesse's three-year-old fillies going into this year. Mm. But Mill Isle is the one I can't get. I just can't see it, to be honest. Uh, I think the stats are she's very. Not stay a mile. She, she's not going to stay a mile. I think she's bred for 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 certainly six furlongs, even five furlongs. Yeah, exactly. And she didn't shape, you know, like we were talking earlier about Siskin. Like, Siskin looks a little bit like he could get a mile. Mm. Millisle just looked all speed in her run, personally. Um, so I think, I know a few people have, have already put it up, but I'd be siding with Peaceful in this race mm. at around 10 to 1. I think that's not a bad each way play. Has progressed from run to run like Aidan O'Brien's do. And and Aiden has a v- fantastic record in this race with second or third strings. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if if um, the second string here, Peaceful, went in, to be honest. As she, looks less, she, yeah, she, she looks a lot less exposed, doesn't she, than Love? And I suppose, I think Love ran seven times last year. She's obviously well-bred as well. But I, I think she, I'm not so sure. People are talking about Love for an Oaks. I think she's more of a miler myself. Um Whereas I think Peaceful could, she could be the full package. She could win at a mile and I think she could win even further down the line. Yeah, potentially so. Um, but I just think at the moment, as, as you say, Love has probably better form in the book, but ran four times more. So you're getting twice the price about Peaceful and 10 to 1 doesn't seem a bad each way play for me. <laughs> Less exposed. Ronan, I must ask you, just Andrew mentioned Mill Isle. Have you had a chance to catch up with Danny, the Harrington uh, string, or did you, I suppose, she's obviously has a nice pack of fillies, but what's your thoughts, I suppose, on, on Mill Isle? I mean, she, 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 won, she won nicely, actually, over six furlongs uh, over course and distance. Do you think a mile would be a worry for her? Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, as you said, I was, I was in a lucky position last year of being able to write uh, Jesse's column for for the field, and uh, obviously she had a fantastic year. So, um, getting the inside track and all those two year old fillies was 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 brilliant for us. Um, she'd be a great story, Mila, because she won her maiden in um, Bellystown, which is uh, yeah. I'm not sure Bellystown have ever had a, a you know a subsequent classic winner. Um, I I think she has a reasonable chance of getting getting the trip. She hit the line very hard in the in the Sheevy Park. Um, that looks solid enough form in the context of this race. Um, and she's got the new market form. Yeah, another one that you just go and see see if she does it. And if she doesn't, you can always come back and trip for the Commonwealth Cup or 
or something like that at, at Royal Ascot. Um, I, I just going back to quadrilateral there. I, geez, I'd be I'd be a bit more positive than 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 you two are. I think um, like that run um, that run in the Phillies Mile. Like you stop the race two furlongs out, and you think she's going to be she's not even going to get placed. I just think she's done really well to to come up on on the far rail. She's really brave, put her head down and um, and hit the line. You know that's the course and distance form. I, I don't I don't I really don't mind um, that sort of mile form, uh, the Phillies mile kind of that sort of time of season. Um, her, Phillies or whatever coming out to win a mile race. Then she might actually end up being an, an Oaks Philly later in the season. But for now, I think. A mile could be fine for her, you know. And if you look at the Phillies mile winners from the last four years, the likes of Lawrence, Rhododendron, Minding, um, you know, it's a serious race. I and I, I just don't think race, the, actually, Ronan, just up here. I think the, the Phillies mile last year as well. I, I suppose holds a lot of the clues with obviously love winning in Ireland, the mile player, and yeah. you know, I think, I think I think the form is quite good of that race. It's just yeah, I, I just thought she may be better on the further. Yeah, she and she might do in the end, but like you know, you can you can be a I just think she could be very good, you know, and, and if she is very good, she could have the ability to win a, a, a softish looking guineas and then eventually be better over further and go in, in an Oaks or go 10 furlongs. I just don't think that rate, that this, this, this renewal is as good. And she's, uh, she's by Frankel. Uh, she's only had three runs. Uh, she, she's, um, you know, she's got the course and distance form there already. So I think she's rock solid there at the top of the market. Okay, just just before we move on from the one thousand guineas, actually, I just wanted this is an open question to either of you guys because there's one I thought was interesting. Now, her damn side is quite weak, uh, cloak of spirit of the Hannans, and look at I think a step back up up to a mile will suit her. She she stepped up at. She stepped up, I think it was at Doncaster. Um, I think she's clearly talented. And I think if the ground, obviously, is, is supposed to be very, very... Would it be on the firm side, lads? I haven't actually seen a report, but I know it's going to be rattling quick at, at Newmarket. And, like, a stepping up to a mile again, I think will suit her. Her, her debut at Ascot was sensational. And I saw, actually, an interview with Andre Azzini as well. He was quite positive on, on her chances. That's cloak of spirit. I don't know, either you guys want to come in on her? Yeah, she's... I mean, she's... In an open race, really, she's another unexposed filly that could be anything now. Uh, as in, and she doesn't have to race against Daya anymore, who beat her that day at Newmarket. Uh, she's out of the race. Uh, I think that was announced yesterday. Yeah. Uh, she yeah, was back, back at the line as well, Cloak of Spirit, actually, after making yeah. a spot of running. And... Yeah, yeah, that was, I'm uh, trying to remember what race that was. Um, was that Newmarket? But um, yeah, listen, Rockfell, I think. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, just 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 before we, I suppose, so we'll come on. Just we covered obviously Siskin, but before Siskin runs in the in the two thousand, obviously we have the one thousand, which is on on Saturday the thirteenth of June. Uh, Roland, you spoke listen about uh, about Jesse's Philly Phillies. I suppose is there anything else that could enter the mix in in maybe an Irish Guineas one thousand? Uh, aside from Jesse's Phillies, or yeah, that you that you have on your on your list. Yeah, I like. I like Jessie's other filly, and I'm not sure if she's going to run. Um, I'm a big fan of her, Alpine Star. Okay. Uh, if if you go back to last season, uh, Albina ended up going to France um, for Arc Day, the the race that she won there, the, the Group One uh, for two year old fillies. Uh, it's not the Lager there. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, uh, Marcel Boussac. The Marcel Boussac. Yeah. Uh, the initial plan was to send Alpine Star there, and then. She got a small nick, so they send it Albina instead. I'm not saying Alpine Star would have won, but I just think it's interesting that they that's what they wanted, that's the route that they wanted to go with her, and Albina was kind of a second choice. If you look at Alpine Star, I thought she was brilliant when she won her maiden at Galway. She she was drawn wide, she came wider in the ground, and she came three and a half lengths clear of a good Aiden O'Brien filly called Santiago. Uh, and then she beat the likes of Love and um, so wonderful a few other okay fillies in the debutante stakes. I think she showed a real good attitude that day. She's um she's a half sister to Alpha Centauri, uh by mm-hmm. Sea the Moon. I think she she's my filly to follow for the whole season. Okay. Maybe it's that she's better over further, but if she if she rocked up here in, in an Irish one thousand guineas now, I know they have Albina and Albina has a stronger level of form, but that was kind of the way just the way it worked out last season. Alpine Star wasn't really given the chance and because of that injury, and Albina did, so it doesn't mean Alpine Star couldn't be as good 
And I just think it is interesting that the, it was the first choice for her to go to, to Paris and uh, it ended up being Albina. And at a bigger price, Alpine Star would be very interesting to me if she if she lined up here in, in the in the Irish one thousand. Interesting. Well, I suppose that's that's Guinea's weekend in Ireland, which is obviously Saturday, the thirteenth of June, and then and then the the fourteenth as well, which is the Sunday. But just I suppose the then coming on then the following week is scheduled for Royal Ascot, and of the bigger group ones, Andrew, I'll come to you first because I suppose the King Stand is is the big one on the Tuesday. Just looking ahead at this point, Batash, he's rated one twenty six. You know, he's two to one now. Do you think? Uh, do you think? He, he can go on better this year. I, I believe you're actually a fan of Batash. Oh, I'm a massive fan of Batash. Yeah, uh, I think he's an absolute machine. He obviously, it's either he's brilliant or he's no good at all. Um, but that's kind of uh, that is almost what I love about him is that you could get you could get him winning a race by four lengths. You know, a, a good Group One over five furlongs, or he could kind of completely bomb out. Uh, look, the last. Fella? What's sorry? What's the key to this fella, Batash? Ah, just some days he's on a going day, you know. Like you, you saw even the Nuntorp last year, uh, he hadn't run previously very well at York, uh, and then suddenly just absolutely scooted clear. Uh, so I don't, I don't think he's got bad ascot form either. A lot of people make a lot of out of it, but he's come second twice in two King stands. Like it's not the worst and bo- both times he's been well clear a third yeah. I just don't see there being much else in this race to be honest I think people are trying to make excuses and if Batash is on any sort of going day I think he hoovers these up It'll be interesting to see does if anything comes from left field in that division Japan obviously Ronan that's the, that's the plan I, I read in the Irish field that he goes for the Prince of Wales and, and that would be without a, a, I suppose a prepper won the King Edward last year over, over a mile and four the question I want to ask is would you be confident that you'll see a better Japan back in trip I think so yeah I mean yeah. obviously he went on to win the, the Judemont International then and what was it kind of a tactical race at York last season. But uh, yeah, I, like if you go back to last season, Japan, do you remember how, how much he drifted in the derby? Uh, I think he went off 20 to one and he's ended yeah, up he did, running. Did, yeah. yeah, like he, he, they just didn't fancy him at all. Um, and he's ended up nearly winning the race. He, he was in the line of four on the near side and he was coming, coming very late. And I just think, yeah, there must have been some reason for that, that he had a slight setback or they, he wasn't exactly where they wanted him for the derby and that he's run so well there. And then what he went on to do was really, really good. I know Ryan Moore absolutely loves him. If you ever hear him talking about him and listen to another podcast there a while ago when he was talking about him, not not one to get excited. Him, but um, yeah, just very excited about the horse. He loves him. And I think this could be a huge year. I think all roads lead back to... Um, to Longchamp for the Ark. And I think, I'm pretty sure I read that Japanese owners have bought into him um, as well. So I think this is a, a big year for Japan and significant that they've obviously kept him in training and, and think enough of him to keep going that way. Obviously, his uh, younger brother, Mosul, is He's a similar enough profile to an extent as, as something like a Highland Reel. But like, if you look at, if, if you look at Japan, like, he is very much bred to be a middle distance horse. That's what. That's why I asked. Do you think? And I suppose that's that's the plan is to go straight there. I take it to uh, the Prince of Wales. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't think they're going to have time for uh, for a prep run now. Um, and yeah, you know they'll they, they'll probably run a, a pacemaker over there for him and make it a test. Um, yeah, I I, I I don't see a problem with ten furlongs myself. I thought he was good in the at York last season. Um, and. Yeah, you might be right that he a mile and a half would probably ultimately suit him better, but I don't see a problem with ten furlongs. And 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 Ronan, let's ask you about Stratavarius. Obviously, he starts off in the coronation, uh, over a mile and four. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, I think he's he's six to four favorite to ret- well to yeah to, to retain the Ascot Gold Cup. Now, it was on soft ground last year. What what sort? I suppose there anything that can enter the mix in your mind for for the stairs division when, by the time well, it comes to Ascot. Yeah, well, I mean, the obvious one is Q Gardens, isn't it? Uh, who who beat him last season in uh, on Champions Day? Um, 
that that's that's the big one. I think he's going to go straight there for for um, for Aidan O'Brien. I, I I fancy Kew Gardens last year for the Ascot Gold Cup, and he had a, had a small setback just weeks before. And I remember Aidan just being really disappointed or quite frustrated that that happened because I think they did fancy him fancy him strongly to give Stradivarius a real race, which you know was obviously vindicated when on Champions Day. Uh, Stradivarius, though, geez, that's exciting, though, him coming back to a mile and a half. And I, I think that could, you know, what if he goes and wins on Friday and wins, you know, impressively or wins as he, as he does? Do they, well, do they not have a, a different route from then? Do they, do they still go for the Ascot Gold Cup? Or, yeah. Or well, I'm quite keen on a horse. Like he's coming back in trip, but there's another horse. All he's doing is going up in trip at the, at the back end of last year. I think he was a, he, he progressed a lot actually coming into the autumn. And he was one of those I always saw him as developing into a, a leading stare. That's Martin Mead's technician. And I heard an interview actually, uh, I think it was on At The Races. I'm not sure, uh, but he's absolutely singing about this horse. You think he's improved no end. He's 10 to 1 now. Obviously, there's been a bit of support for him. Uh, he's entered, I think he's actually entered up this weekend. But I think like if, if it did come up anyway soft or if there was any soft ground, it would help him even more. He likes to get his toe in one twice. I think he won two group ones in the autumn in, in France. That's, yeah, so technician. Uh, I like him. I actually liked him for the St. Ledger last year and he, he disappointed badly. And there was, I think there was soft in the description that day. Uh, but um, yeah, he's one definitely, I think, to keep on side uh, technician. And obviously if he wins this weekend, he's going to he's going to shorten up, I think, for, for the Ascot Gold Cup. Lads, coming on to the derbies, I suppose Irish or English, for starters, I think we can all agree Pinatubo won't win any of the derbies. What, what, what do you lads think? No, no chance. I don't think. Absolutely no chance. He shouldn't even be in the market. Ronan, you spoke to him to Brian a couple of weeks back. Uh, Bally Dial hopes. Give us some insight. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're all going to they're all going to get a chance to run in um, trials now in the in the coming weeks, which is you know is, is always always my favourite time in flat years when all the derby trials are there and you're you're trying to work out who who's going to come up and. Who's who's uh, who's going to make their case or whatever? Uh, Mogul you ever that song? Obvious... I must I must stop you there. Did you ever hear that song? It reminds me actually the start of the flat season. I love. Obviously, you're talking about the the, the the trials and the classic trials. Did you ever listen to that song? The winter it is past and the summer's come at last. The curl of Kildare. What a beautiful song that is. But I'll let you continue. Will you give us a verse there, Barry, or what? Oh, the winter it is past and the summer's come. Oh, that's and the birds they're singing in the trees that's a Carla man singing that as well but I'll let you continue that's my <laughs> Paddy Riley as well uh, Mogul is the is the I think is going to be the key one for Bally Doyle this year where where he um, goes what Derby Charlie really goes for maybe the Darrenstown or something like that um, I'm not at actually sure uh, I haven't had a look at the uh, flat schedule to make sure that all these trials are taking place but he will go for a Derby child mogul, I think, and you know, a beautiful looking horse by all means. Uh, did it nicely last year on a uh, champion uh, champion stakes day at Leopardstown on Irish Champions Week. That was some weekend. performance. That was that was some performance. Yeah, yeah it was a smooth fight. performance. I wouldn't I wouldn't be going mad about the form or anything, but um, it was good. And I wouldn't be too worried about the Newcastle run. This you know, no. the mile there on the sand. Um, uh, you know, late in the season. I, wouldn't be too pushed that wouldn't be worried about it anyway um, so he'll be the one that you'd be looking to in, in a trial I think they're going to run a Nobel Prize in a trial as well I think Mythical is there as well uh, interesting the Nobel Prize is if I'm not mistaken is the um, Highland Real Bull Brother um, who, who won a maiden which, late oh, it, 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 if I was to press you for which one you'd be sticking with of the Bally Doyle horse? Yeah. Mogul is the most is the one you stick with now. Yeah, yeah, no, I think so. He, he impressed um at Irish Champions Weekend, as you said. Like he was five wide. I think he was he was he was very green that day as well, still. And the way he picked up and Cinnamon, of course, the the Halford Aga Khan horse was 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 in behind. He got first run on him, but no, I think like you mentioned the farm. Like obviously we don't know how how good that farm is. I wouldn't be worrying about 
the the futurity either. I think um, you know the, the I don't think conditions or the track w- would have played to his strengths there. What what was your thoughts? I suppose Andrew. I know you liked Inish Free. Obviously, you mentioned it, but at this point, where does the value lie in the in the I suppose the Epsom Derby market? I'd say it, it is probably with Mogul, to be honest. Those were the two I had in mind at the start of the season. I was mm. a big fan of Inish Free. Uh, I'd say like he's obviously picked up a knock and might have to go to one of these races uh, without having run, which would make me think he'd probably, if the, if they do that, he'd probably run in the Irish Derby rather than the Epsom Derby. Uh, but look, the two of them I'd, I'd carry throughout the season. If Finnish Free can't do it at the start of the season, I still wouldn't be giving up on him winning a few uh, Group 1s near the back end of the season. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it is free. Actually, he, I had him on my list as well. But I think as things happen, I think Mogul probably is. What, what's your guys' thoughts on military march? Like, you thought, like, I'm not sure if it's actually Ben's, isn't he? Do you think Epsom will suit him? Uh, I, I'm a big fan. I, I, I like both him and the the uh, Al Sahel, the the two Godolphin Colts who uh, came clear in that autumn stakes. Uh, that that actually that was run on the same day as uh, the Dewhurst, and um, it wasn't. I don't think the time was that it compared that badly with the Dewhurst. Um, uh, military march, I think, goes goes for the Guineas, and I don't mind that at all. Uh, um, as well, Al Sahel does as well. I think, uh, like if you if you look at the Guineas, it's is often a good trial for the um, for for the Derby itself. Uh, so. You know, if you see, say, if you're taking a press about military mile or military march now, you know, you know, if he runs, even if he runs third, fourth uh, in the Guineas, staying on, he's still going to have run a huge derby mm. trial. You know, probably stronger form than any of the other derby trials. You know, he likes a Mad Moon. You know, he stays on and finishes fourth in the Guineas last season. He's probably had the strongest level of form going into the derby of all the other derby trial winners because he finished fourth in the Guineas. And has run a huge race. Massar finished third in the Guineas, uh, and went on and, and won and won a Derby. I, I just think the Guineas is, can often be a, 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 the best guide to the Derby because it's just such a strong race, even if, even though it's over a mile. Um, so I'm always interested in horses like Military March. Who you look at the, look at his pedigrees by new approach, you're probably thinking you know the Derby is is his ultimate goal. But start him off in the Guineas, and if he runs well, he's he's run a huge trial. Yeah, actually, just another one who is going uh, for the Guineas. And Andrew, you, I think you mentioned earlier you spoke um, with Ushian Murphy. Does he write Cameco? And like, he he was another one actually that I thought that just uh, obviously he's bred for further. He's bred for. It's been well spoke about that that he's he, you know his his pedigree suggests he was was he the American dirt sire. Um, I'm not sure what he's bred by Cameco, but just the way he runs and the way he shapes to me. Again, I, I I'm not sure whether he'd be the Epsom type. No, well, Oshin said to said to us that um, he was obviously a horse of a lot of ability, but he was unsure about the undulations and new market even for the Guineas. So if he's unsure about the undulations and new market, I'm not sure Epsom's going to be his spot either. I think that like the straight mile, completely flat at Newcastle was exactly what he wanted. So I'd say he'll be at his best on on flatter tracks. Yeah, uh, is there anything at a bigger price that Andrew Blair White is, I suppose, hovering over with his mouse? For the Derby? For the Derby. Well, I have I have a really speculative one, which was actually going to be in um, one of my dark horses to follow. Tomorrow, there's a uh, classic trial at Kempton. And there's a John Galston horse called Hypothetical Running. Um, he won a, a maiden at Chelmsford uh, very impressively in December. Now, obviously, that form isn't up to too much, as most races at that time of the year are. But I remember a week before, Galston unleashed a horse called Wool Koenig, who's been everyone's kind of hype horse. And this horse has kind of gone into the shadows behind him. But he did it equally as impressively. He's thirty three to one now for the Derby, but he's I think seven to two, four to one tomorrow. If he wins with the Tory on top tomorrow, he's a sixteen to one chance overnight, I reckon. So I've I've taken a bit of thirty three to one and, and have my fingers crossed. 
It's interesting because we'll come on to a horse that, that I quite like, who's uh, for the Oaks, actually, who's who's entered up tomorrow as well. But yeah, no, just, there was one of the bigger price, actually, highest ground, Michael Stout. He's only ran once. You know, he ran seven furlongs at, at Leicester. Uh, he's out of a Japanese mayor, Frankel Colt, out of a Japanese mayor, who's, I think the, the mayor has bred like something like seven middle distance winners. And yeah, I like the way he won at Leicester, he didn't, he didn't even jump out of stalls. I think he, he missed two lengths at the start and was hands and heels and I think he won snug by about two lengths. Obviously, I think he needs to be supplemented as well, but I think the talk is that he is going to be running one of the classics, sorry, one of the, one of the trials and and be supplemented then. 25 to 1, there was a small bit of support from last week. That's high highest ground. I kind of like the way he done it at Leicester and I know Leicester wouldn't be our traditional, I suppose, prep prep track for Epsom but just at a bigger price I would be with Mogul I suppose the the, the, the doubts over in free and and the setback that he's taken but uh, Mogul for me at this point and as I said highest ground uh, Borma Pride I spoke about she runs tomorrow against your hypothetical Andrew uh, to my knowledge I think it's in the same race uh, yeah. yeah no I think she was like she bet peaceful like, we, we already spoke about peaceful like she, she bet peaceful. It was very heavy ground, but it was. I think she won a twenty to one, and it was, it was, um, it was her first, it was first start on a list of race. Like that was pretty impressive. I'm not sure did you see that rolling, but that's born with pride, and I think she's headed a market for for the Oaks. Uh, yeah, no, I, I thought that was yeah hugely impressive. That to win first time out on heavy ground and beat peaceful, uh, that was hugely impressive from by uh, born with pride, and uh, that race tomorrow looks very strong. Uh, she checks on the Colts there. So if she ran any sort of race there, uh, yeah. first time out, obviously she goes well fresh. She was able to win on her debut last season. She 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 goes well tomorrow. She'll have to be a huge player uh, for the Oaks. Yeah, and if I had to maybe press you, I know we spoke about Peaceful. For an Oaks selection at, at this point, would you, would you be siding with, I suppose, Barma Pride? This is before now. This is going to be released before Wednesday. Uh, Barma Pride or Peaceful? Or, or, or what is your selection for the Oaks at this point? Yeah, no, it's very cloudy, but um, I'm sorry to keep harping on about her, but I, if uh, Alpine Star did uh, rock up and something like that, so maybe she ends up in, in the Curra. Um, I would be, uh, I'd be a big fan of hers and see how she things develop for her. Whether she wins at the curve for the for the Irish Guineas, uh, just another um, Harrington filly that should should get a mention here is uh, K M Pepper. Who, mm. you know, we're going to get a good steer on how good that filly's mild form is when Quadradero runs and love uh, and uh, fit those those fillies uh, running the Guineas in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I thought she was even more of a case of her being outpaced and, and just running on late. And she just looks she looked very slow for a mile that day, and and um, a mile and a half could be exactly what she wants. Uh, I think she'd be very interesting. Um, KM Pepper for the, for the Oaks as well. And you'd love to see Australia announce himself on the scene with a three-year-old classic winner, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, he was he was a huge winner himself. He was one of my all-time favourites, Australia. Um, Andrew, anything I suppose if you if I had to if you had to nail your colours to the mast for the for the Oaks at this point? Yeah, yeah it was actually funny. Ron just said it there. I, I'm I'd be with Kay and Pepper here. Uh, I think she just screams out of all those fillies that she's the one that desperately wants a mile and a half. Um, she was so outpaced in that filly's mile and absolutely flew uh, late on. My worry with her is if maybe if Albinia or Alpine Star, if either of them win the Irish 1000 guineas, will one of them go over to the Epsom Oaks and KM Pepper then will run the Irish Oaks? Uh, would, I wouldn't be sure about that. But whatever race she was to turn up in, whether it was English or Irish Oaks, I'd back her. Andrew, it'd be rude not to mention the Irish Derby and Brentford Hope, who runs in the City Island colours. <laughs> yeah thoughts on him ah look he, he won he won his his maiden extremely impressively um it's one of those of course with jamie spencer on him it looks probably even more impressive than than what it was but um he's, look there's so many of these horses you know where i was talking there a second ago about hypothetical volcanic all of these horses they've won a maiden really impressively some of them could be really good some of them could be a bust um 
I'd say he will run in the Irish Star because of connections, and yeah, it's great for the for the Mulrines to have, to have a potentially very good flat horse that could win, that could have a chance of maybe winning a classic. And I'm going to give both you the crystal ball now, and I'm going to ask you for I suppose one trainer or one jockey to keep on the right side of for this upcoming flat season. Andrew, we'll go to you first. Well, I was I was trying to find something a bit out, out of the ordinary, but I couldn't really find it. So I just um, I'd stick with Jesse Harrington's three-year-old filly. So I'd say if you back all of them between all the ones we mentioned and also Valeria, Messalina, all these horses, I think they're a fine crop. And it would be very interesting to see what what uh, what two-year-old stock she gets this year as well, whether she'll be able to replicate it all. But um, I know a very uh, unoriginal there, but I'd say following them will steer you down the right track. KM Pepper, uh, Roland Groom. Trainer or jockey is supposed to keep on the right side of for this upcoming flat season. I'll give you a quickly give you one of both. Uh, I think the trainer to follow Irish trainer, a uh, young guy uh, training out of Mead here, uh, Jack Davison. Um, I thought Jesus. he did. Thomas Kyle, when we get th- Thomas Kyle, won't be impressed with that now. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas knows. Thomas knows the regard he's held in on the Champ E podcast. You know, we're we're giving someone you know another chance here to try and get his name out. So. Um, uh, Jack is, uh, I think he only trained five winners last season, but he trained a, a lot of uh, kind of good seconds and thirds. The likes of Fresno went to, the likes of, you know, York and Ascot ran really well. And Black Magic Woman should have won, uh, well, not should have, but was second in the Sovereign Path Handicap and Irish Champions weekend. I think he has, he's going to have a few more horses this season. He's, uh, he looks you know, like he's, you know, kind of progressing a string along. Um, I think he could have a, a big year. He could 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 be a trainer who lands a big race somewhere. Uh, the jockey is quite an obvious one, but he because he got quite hyped up last season. Um, Dylan Brown McMonagall. Uh, he's down at Joseph's. Um, you know this guy. He's rode like a huge. I can't even think of the number, but he's a huge number of uh, pony pony race uh, winners. Um, he he already got rid of his ten pound claim. Um, He's going to be huge value for seven pounds when when the racing kicks off again. Uh, he'll get loads of opportunities for, for Joseph and you know any of the in handicaps, uh, big handicaps especially. I wonder will they just be a bit more uh, efficient with his mar- with his claim and try and keep him for the big handicaps like they did with Oshie Murphy uh, when he was kind of coming through. Um, Dylan Brown McMonagall, he's from Donegal actually, and uh, based with Joseph, I think he could have uh, a big season this year with, with a seven pound claim. Yeah, interesting. Just just when you mentioned that, mine, mine was actually Oshin Orr, which I think, I suppose he, he rode a little bit for for Dermot Weld, and I think I think Donny Gallman as well actually came on the scene. Obviously, for I think he rode for for Eddie Lynham in around twenty fifteen, but I think last year, um, you know, it was a big year for Oshin, and I think you know if he gets more opportunities with Dermot, he could be definitely, I suppose, one to keep on the right side of lads. Just finally, I suppose on the season two dark horses I suppose and maybe an anti-post selection uh, Ronan which, we're with you we'll stay with you and, and don't forget to put my Mark has uh, called who hasn't been named, who hasn't been named yet um, yeah I, 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 cause I mentioned her already I don't want to say her again Alpine Star is, is my kind of horse to follow for the season um, one of the other Harrington Phillies um uh, Andrew mentioned her briefly there, Valeria Messalina. I think she could be okay. Uh, ran um, second. I think she's a bit of a bit of a nutcase or something. Uh, if I remember, uh, Jessica telling me that she's quite difficult or a hothead filly. But if um, they were looking at running her in one of the guineas, maybe they'll go for the Curra now. Um, and she's one of the kind of lower, but under the radar kind of Jessica Harrington fillies that could could be okay. She's owned by. Um, Anthony and Sonia Rogers, the same uh, same um, owners as uh, Skitter Scatter. Um, so I think she could be under the radar, maybe you know something like a big price for an Irish Guineas. Okay. Andrew Blair White, the floor is yours. Yeah, well, I already mentioned uh, hypothetical. Um, so by the, by the time of three o'clock tomorrow that could uh, sound very good or very bad um one he, he wouldn't be a complete 
Dark Horse. Sorry, um, Lance. <laughs> um, one that I, I don't think he, he's a complete Dark Horse, but perhaps maybe he's a bit forgotten, uh, is Ma Moon. I think he could uh, run very well. Uh, he, I can't believe a horse like him hasn't won a Group 1 yet. Uh, it's a bit of a tragedy that, um, but he, he should be lining up in, in all the mile two, maybe mile four, uh, four-year-old plus races oh, right. this year. Um, I remember seeing uh, after Chris Hayes won a few races at Nath on the first day of the season that he was reporting that, it, that he'd wintered very well. So, you know, fingers crossed that that's the case and he can he can win one of them. And one, uh, one anti-post one for you uh, in the Commonwealth Cup. Uh, the horse is going to run on Thursday, I think, in the Pavilion Stakes up in Newcastle. It's a horse called A. Alley. Uh, he's Simon Crisford's horse. He won the Norfolk last year. He then won a, a Group 2 over in France and won the Flying Childers as well. He's got good course form. And he's another one of these ones that's just t- taken a punt that if he wins the Pavilion, he'll be a single-figure price for the Commonwealth Cup, or even if he runs well in the Pavilion on Thursday. So I've uh, I've taken 16-1. to 1. Uh, It seems the, the race he'll be running in. So, um, yeah, ho- hopefully that, that can turn out to be all right. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. I suppose from my own point of view, I've mentioned Technician for the the Ascot Gold Cup. I think he's a good each way bet now at ten to one. But one man, I suppose, hasn't got a mention in the whole podcast, and we've we've gone through flat season Ireland, England, the whole lot. Is a certain Jim Bulger, and Wichita is obviously one of my the horses that I'm leaning towards for the the two thousand guineas on. On Saturday, and in his in his maiden, actually, fiscal rules. Okay, he's entered for the Irish Guineas. He's about twenty five to one. He's obviously still a maiden, but he was beaten a short head by Wichita on debut. You know, it was it was at seven furlongs on yielding ground at at the current. You know, J- Jim Bulger says he wasn't very well fancied first him up, but he made. He did a lot of donkey work. He travelled so well in the race and just got headed late home by Wichita, who actually picked up very smart. Uh, the rest of the form is questionable, you know, but but I suppose he could be one. I'm not sure if if, if the Guineas, like going into the Guineas, it is a strange season, obviously, but if you were going into a Guineas as a maiden, I'm not sure that'd be ideal. But I think for later on in the year, I think he could develop up into a nice sort. And he's by, um, he's by a Galileo mayor, and make believe is the sire as well, uh, so maybe maybe a mile, a mile and two as this, as the season goes on. That's fiscal rules. So I think he's definitely one uh, talented horse to keep on 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 the right side of. But I suppose that concludes our flat season uh, preview. We'll be back, I suppose, on Thursdays to preview the upcoming racing as they come. And lads, I want to I suppose wish you well for the the season ahead. Plenty of winners. 